And welcome back. We're officially entering our first segment of the show this morning. As we mentioned prior to the commercial break, we are now joined by representatives of the Belize National Teachers Union. We have with us on set this morning, first Vice President Luke Palacio. Good morning. We also have with us the National Secretary of the BNTU, Ruth Schumann. Good morning. Good morning, folks. Good morning. Mm -hmm. There's a lot on the table to discuss this morning in respect of everything happening with teachers. Mm -hmm. We know it's the summertime, but there are new developments taking place. Uh, first of all, let's begin by talking about uh, the issue that first came up regarding the Christmas break and what the holiday schedule should look like in a new school year. Okay, basically, um, good morning again. Good morning. Thank you for having us to share with you uh, issues, concerns, and developments with the teaching profession in Belize. Mm -hmm. in, as it relates to the Christmas break, we know that for many, many years, we are accustomed to having three weeks break for Christmas, two weeks for the Easter break, and then, of course, we are supposed to be free during the month of July. That is articulated in the rules. Um, there is one rule that the ministry tried to implement this year in which they are saying depending on when Christmas falls on the day, which day if it falls before a Wednesday, then you get the three weeks prior or I mean up until the, after the, the New Year's break or if it falls later then it is going to be the, uh, a little shorter. Mm -hmm. um, our issue with that is that Precedence has been set for many, many years. This uh, is our practice. This is what we've articulated to our teachers. This, in fact, is what the school calendars that is sent out by the ministry has every year, except for this year. And our teachers immediately took note of it. And so we decided that we needed to address the matter. And we were able to provide them with records showing that this has been the practice. Mm -hmm. We have always insisted on the ministry, that we are not their adversaries. But every time they want to do something, they come and arbitrarily decide and want to use this so-called policy of big stick. We are the policy makers. You people should comply and mm -hmm. we, we own the system. And we keep on saying to ministry, one important fact they must bear in mind, that our teachers are being paid with taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm not the monies of politicians, not the monies of persons who head those ministries, who then believe that we are their slaves, that we will not sit by idly and watch this happen. We are saying to them, we are prepared to dialogue. We are prepared to meet. Because if we need to convince our teachers that some action being taken by those in authority is in our best interest or will be beneficial to both parties, we are always prepared to do that. Mm -hmm. But you cannot continue with these high-handed ac actions that we are seeing taking place recently. And the BNT will just sit by quietly and not uh, make objections to those things. So the fundamental issue there was not necessarily a change in the Christmas holiday schedule, but more the fact that it was just passed on to you without any consultation. Exactly so. That's the issue we've been having right now. Mm -hmm. That, you know, we've always heard from those in the ministry that we're partners, and we agree, we're partners. So when we're partners, we need to ensure that we're included, and that is the component that has been missing. Mm -hmm. And not just recently with this, but with other issues as well, mm -hmm. where when we should be making a part of this conversation, we're not. We have to find out about these memos through our teachers, through our principals, they don't come to us. Yeah. These emails are coming out, we're not included, we get the, the excuse all the time, oh, we'll check with the secretary, we've told the secretary over and over. And so if we're partners, it is going to be beneficial for everyone that we're included mm -hmm. and that the conversations happen, that we see a balance in it and we come forward together. And that's the component that's missing right now. And I think that's the message that we want to bring forth. Let's be true partners, not just in words, but in action. Mm -hmm. Now, to be clear, there is a regular schedule of meetings that take place between the union and the ministry. You've been working on several different issues for a very long time. How often is it that you sit down with uh, representatives of the ministry and who are you talking with? I like your, your question <laughs> because you said that they are scheduled but they don't take they place. Don't take place. Mm. 
many times. As a matter of fact, we had an arrangement with the minister when he first became Minister of Education. His thing was, I want to meet with the union as often as I could. In fact, let us agree that we'll meet every three months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have not met with the minister probably going on to a year mm -hmm. or more. Mm -hmm. um, so it is not that we do not try. We, whenever we see anything, we write to them. Anything that we believe needs to be discussed. In this instance, for, um, when we had the matter of the special uh, permits to teach, mm -hmm. based on the provisional license scenario that was going on, yes. we were fully engaged. We were able to convince our teachers and say to them, look, this is what the rule says. This is what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And we were able to recommend some conditions that would prevail until those teachers were able to meet those requirements. Mm -hmm. And everything went well. The few teachers who decided, well, I'm not going back to school or I'm not going to apply for the special permit, we told them outright, yeah. it is your fault. Yeah. So when it comes now to the ministry continuously trying to do these things, as a matter of fact, only last week they had an ad on one of these media houses where they didn't say that BNTU was a partner. Mm -hmm. They mentioned other entities as mm -hmm. partners. No, is that genuine? Was it an oversight? Mm -hmm. And then the minister will get on, the, on, the other, on another media house and say that there is nothing sinister about this. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are educators. I keep on saying to our teachers and to this nation, our teachers didn't go to schools to become fools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they must be respected for the knowledge they have, the understanding they have. And if there is a misinterpretation of something, then let's get the correct interpretation, but don't use it to your advantage mm -hmm. or your perceived advantage, and then we end up in these type of situations that appear confrontational. So the current issue at hand is the renewal of the licenses. Mm -hmm. And if we would step back a few years and go back to that conversation when the deadline was approaching, I recall the unions being very much on board in encouraging their members to do what was required to get their license or special permit that would then lead to their license. Um, was it set out at that time what would be the subsequent actions after a teacher had acquired their license? Not, not really, Marlene, because if you look at the rules, and one of our concerns as well is that the ministry seems to want to be cherry picking when it comes to the rules. The rule says that we have what we, are, we know as valid license. A license is a valid one if you have a provisional license. Mm -hmm. A license is valid if you have a special license that is for mostly for persons doing vocational technical education. Yeah. And then we have our full license. Those are considered valid. Mm -hmm. A special license can also be given to persons coming in to do short-term courses like if a peace course to go into the yeah. school or mm -hmm. a church bring in some people to volunteer because we don't want people in the schools who are not uh, qualified or suitable mm -hmm. to be teachers. Um, and so those are the licenses that we have. The full license, the rule states that you are to maintain a full license. Yeah. Yes. There is no expiration date on a full license. Mm -hmm. But a part of the rule, which I'm, I guess Sister Schumann will share with us shortly, is it does speak to if you do not maintain your license, then there may be a renewal. But that has never been practiced. Mm -hmm. And so we are saying, even if that were the case, you are now bringing out certain documents that do not even exist in these rules because they have a form that you will now need to fill out for your renewal. Mm -hmm. There are some questionable aspects of it that we need clarification on. And if all of those things were done, I believe we would not, have, would not be having this discussion. We would be saying to our teachers and we would be saying to ministry, as we will be saying to ministry, there are certain things that you must do if you are going to enforce such a rule. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask, um, right. I'll ask Sister Ruth to just maybe read okay, let me, or let review me, that section let me for us. Let me get my question in if you don't mind. Then. Here's what I find to be interesting based on an explanation that has been given by uh, President Smith. Whereas she is saying, you want for us to be able to maintain full license. However, there aren't the types of programs or there aren't the, the time allotted for us to be able to do continuous development in terms of 
acquiring these points, so to speak, to be able to maintain the license, whose responsibility does that fall on primarily? The ministry or the, the union? No. These are the areas we really need to focus on mm -hmm. when it comes to this memo. You see, what has happened over the years is that ministry is the only one who can approve CPD hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No other entity. It is the responsibility of ministry to ensure that there are these workshops available mm -hmm. for teachers to have professional development. Mm -hmm. It is also the responsibility, and this is the area where we're not focusing on, it is also the responsibility of the managing authorities. Mm -hmm. These managements need to also be providing. Mm -hmm. BNTU is also a partner in this, and BNTU has been, as a matter of fact, our first vice president um, under his portfolio is education. And he is the person in charge of ensuring that the union provides workshops as well. Mm -hmm. But that has been frustrating too for us because there have been times when we apply for the CPD hours and they give us all the turnarounds and in the end it is not approved or if it is approved as we had experienced some years ago, um, we see a memo from ministry saying you must attend our workshop during the same period of time when we are having our workshops. Mm -hmm. And so teachers get in this quandary and, and then when they go to these workshops, there are not enough spaces available. Mm -hmm. And we, we are seeing that You feel that they're frustrating the process of the union exactly. implementing and, and, workshops. And let's not miss the point that managements need to ensure that they themselves provide. And that has not been happening. I must say that there are some principals who have taken the initiative and have done so. And so within this whole pool of teachers, you yeah. will find some teachers who have met the 120 mm -hmm. or more yeah. because their leaders have taken the initiative to do yeah. so, because they are aware that this is part of their responsibility as well. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to looking at what is being required now from teachers, you cannot come and arbitrarily first, because this was done just there was a and memo sent out. A memo sent out. Not and to it's, the union. And it's the timing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't sent to us. We had to find out from other sources. The timing. This memo was sent when teachers were out on vacation. Yeah. That in itself So how do the teachers get it if they're not at the school? Exactly. And some teachers are out of the country. Mm -hmm. I know of a case of a teacher who flew in in a panic. You know, to these things license, yeah. have caused implications. And so one is the timing, mm -hmm. two is the availability mm -hmm. of the CPDs. We're not focusing on high school teachers. Mm -hmm. I would like us to find out how many workshops have been available for, for, secondary, for school. secondary school teachers because the rule speaks that the professional development must be in your area. Mm -hmm. And we have teachers doing physics doing chemistry, doing geography. When was the last time a workshop was held in these areas? Ruth, let me just jump in here to be absolutely clear. Was this a memo sent to all teachers? All teachers are required to renew their license all or teachers. only a select few? No, the teachers who hold a full, a full license, license mm -hmm. must renew. Must renew. Well, and okay. is that what it says in the education rules? Again, like I said, the education rules speaks to maintaining, maintaining the license. license. Mm -hmm. And our contention continues to be that those 120 hours that they're talking about mm -hmm. are just not available. Mm -hmm. Efforts have been made on our part on two occasions. The entity responsible for accrediting these um, hours is known as the Teachers Education and Development Services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they do not approve your application for you to offer these CPDs and to accredit ours, then nothing happens. Mm -hmm. And we've been trying, like um, my sister has pointed out, and to no avail. So we are saying to the ministry now, if you want this thing to work and for it to happen in accordance with the rules, let us sit down. Mm -hmm. And the CPDs must be properly organized the amount of hours that you will accredit 
clearly articulated mm -hmm. so that everybody knows what it is they are going to get. And, and, that's, and that's the clarity I'm trying to get just so that viewers really understand the situation here. So what is typically done is that the ministry uh, puts together their workshop series in, in August. August. In uh, August. So teachers get July off, August they're back in country going to workshops. Yes. Within that month, if a teacher enrolls in one of these workshops, how many credit, how many CPD, continued professional development hours, are they collecting? Because they need to amass 120. Mm -hmm. How many can they get in August? See, that's the other problem we're having. And that's our other point as to why we're here. There has not been a proper accountability of the hours. Yeah. When Ted sent out the because recently Ted sent out the number of hours to each teacher mm -hmm. accumulated. These teachers are coming back telling us, guess what, this is incorrect. We have not gotten from Ted's a clear idea of how the hours are calculated for them. Or we, record keeping for that matter. And record keeping is poor. So you mean I just go to the workshop, I we complete sign. it, but I don't know how many, maybe I did a, a two hour or two credits. We're not sure. We're not sure. And this is the dilemma teachers find them themselves in. And not only that, we find other issues in that you go to these workshops and maybe ministry has, has told the facilitators, you know, teachers are coming. The classrooms, sometimes these workshops are held in classrooms. The classrooms are filled to capacity where you can't even walk into the, mm -hmm. and they tell us no more. And what are these teachers to do? So our point here is that we're not saying don't enforce the rule. Mm -hmm. I want us to make that clear because I don't want us to leave from here and, mm -hmm. and the public thinking here is being to you saying, break the rules. No, mm -hmm. we're saying if you're going to enforce a rule, then the rule must be enforced in a fair manner. So let and me ask, that is what we are here speaking for. So let me ask this question then. In the true spirit of dialogue, shouldn't the ministry have come to you guys, yes. you sit at the table, iron out all of these concerns exactly. before moving forward with enforcement, if that is the case? Yes, yeah. it, that's what we're saying. We shouldn't be having this conversation with you. We shouldn't be mm -hmm. here today. Mm -hmm. We should have had this conversation with them. And just like Brother Luke expressed when the 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 special licenses were the, the special permits were being offered, we were all on the same page. Why couldn't it be done now? Mm -hmm. Why couldn't we have gotten that courtesy call as partners in education and say BNTU, we have you know this in mind. We want to enforce this rule. Come on board. How can we iron out the issues we're having? You're a part of this. You provide workshops. Tell us, how can we come together? Let's, you know, and that is what we're saying. That's all we're saying. We shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be discussing this in public. We should be discussing this with those in the ministry. What I'm hearing from you is that there's a lack of formalization of yes. the process. If, if parents or, or pe viewers want to understand, it's like when you enroll your child at a sixth form, you know how many credit hours mm -hmm. they'll get for every class that you take. We don't have that. There is no formula to say no. that if I do a three-day workshop on you know, some kind of learning mm -hmm. challenge in the classroom, learning how to work with these kids, so I develop the skill, and then I take it into the classroom. I don't know how many no. CPD hours that counts for. You walk in blind. And teachers, because they know, it, because it is unfair to say that, oh, this teacher has not met 120 hours, so that teacher has been negligent, has not been going. That is an unfair statement because teachers go to these workshops, sometimes an entire week of workshops, only to find out that at the end they will get no credit because it wasn't in their content. Maybe they took a workshop for um, counseling mm -hmm. and they're teaching social studies or they're yeah. teaching math. And so you wasted your entire week, you know. So but, but you don't know that before you enroll for no. the course. And another problem is that, especially at the high school level, for the districts, the teachers teaching in the district level, mm -hmm. they would come and tell you, we're holding a workshop for English CXC 
um, send two of your teachers when we have a department of 15. Mm -hmm. What happens so to the, the other, other 13? 13. Mm -hmm. You know, so is it fair? So what we're saying, if you want to come on board with this renewal, then let's play fairly. So here is the most pertinent question that I will ask based on what you've said so far. What happens at the beginning of the new school year, yeah. considering the fact that all of this remains unresolved? Well, we have requested a meeting with yes. the ministry so that we can address this. But basically, again, to show you how this thing is being done arbitrarily, mm -hmm. they grab a number out of a hat or somewhere. Well, That's the way I look at it. So there's no and outline for saying, 120? No. And no, no, no. And so they're saying no. anybody who got a full license mm -hmm. before 2014 must apply for this renewal. Mm -hmm. We are saying, what happens to somebody who would have gotten his or her license 2015? 2015. Mm -hmm. This is 2019, and they are nowhere near 120 hours, and next year the license would expire. Mm -hmm. how did that they, is how the did type of dialogue, that hours. is the type of discussion mm -hmm. we need to have. Mm -hmm. We are saying to the ministry, if it is, one of the conditions, if it is that we are going to work this thing out, is that you are going to give this amnesty to everybody who has a full license. Mm -hmm. Let us begin anew. Mm -hmm. At the September 2019, everybody gets a full license and they move forward for the next five years and work out this thing. That's a possible, that's one of the recommendations. The other thing we're saying, when you look at when they have these CPDs coming in August, you will see that some of the um, notification has that you are to attend those CPDs by registration only, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which means they have a limit on the number of persons who are to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How will you blame the teachers for not participating as much as they would want to? If they've maxed out the number of attendees. If, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. If the spaces fill up. Let me, let me just check in in terms of due diligence here. So the union ensures or encourages that, it, that its members get in their CPD hours yes. Every in time. August. Absolutely. Every, Every time. time. Right? Every time. We meet so it's them. not that you're telling people be delinquent Absolutely and don't not. go. Absolutely not. Right? Unknown. All right, so that's one thing. Secondly, you spoke of the fact that you tried to do workshops, um, but because what I hear is you put together your workshop, you submit it for what is like accreditation, like mm -hmm. please mm -hmm. put, mm -hmm. grant this as CPD hours if our teachers attend, mm -hmm. but it's denied? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, this year at our convention, as the person in charge of the education committee, we made a report submitted in the convention booklet, in which we had indicated to our teachers that we have already set up a schedule for CPDs, and we had asked them, because we know that this conflict or apparent clash occurs, that we would be prepared, if they, were be, if they would be prepared to do their CPDs or those attend those sessions in July, because the rule says that teachers should be on holiday in July. So are you prepared to give up your holiday come to our sessions and get some CPD hours so that when the ones for ministry comes about, you will be free to attend those. Was the night they say you have to go through the district center, you need to do this mm -hmm. and you need to do that. So you were trying to put it at a more convenient time yes. and it was denied. And it yes, was denied. So, uh, so avoid that clash, if you will. I don't, I don't want to lose out on your other key partner here. Um, and you said it earlier, the management. Mm -hmm. They're also to put together workshops. Yes. Who do we call the management? So are we talking about the church systems that are in place? Yes. And it is outlined that they're also supposed to provide workshops for CPD hours? That is part of their responsibility as well. Mm -hmm. Have they been following through on that responsibility? No. Generally, no. I don't want to say all. Mm -hmm. Like I said, there have been principals. And, and you see, there's so many areas in education that intertwine yeah. so it's difficult to to say we're going to look at this without looking at that mm -hmm. when we have principals with the right qualifications and the right spirit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then we see these things happening so there have been those in administration who have taken the initiative nobody needs to come and tell them we need to do this mm -hmm. and they prepare the workshops they they and sometimes they do it throughout the course of the year it's not yeah. only in august right and so these teachers are at an advantage and that's what it should be yeah. that's what should be happening we're not saying ministry provide everything and everybody else sits yeah. we're not saying that 
we're saying let's come together. If you're going to enforce rules, then let's enforce them fairly so that everyone who is responsible is held responsible for what they are to do. But, but I'm, I'm trying to understand, Ruth, because you say principles and they're, they're not necessarily management either. No. Management is the church. Yes. Uh, organization or entity that manages the school, your Catholics, yes. uh, Catholic uh, school system, your Anglican school system, your Methodist school system. So, and we know quite a few uh, principals who are also in the classrooms teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I, uh, the issue that comes to mind for me is that they're also being a neglectful, and you cannot tell me if this is the case, a neglectful entity in this situation. Yes. But if you're saying that the management is the Catholic diocese putting together workshops that will uh, meet the CPD requirements, is the Anglican diocese doing the same for their teachers or their schools that they run? Mr. Marlene, invariably, there is this misconception or misunderstanding that management and administration. Mm -hmm. Most of the times, these managements leave everything to the oh, administration. administration. So yeah. that is why the principals are held accountable to do these things. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, our school managers, quite a number of our school managers, uh, as we know in the church state system, may have never been teachers. They yeah. may be a priest or a pastor or, or somebody, mm -hmm. a lay person who is asked, then, okay, you manage the schools. So. The, the principal, the onus is left on the principal to come up with some of these programs. And like you rightly said, if a principal is teaching or, or has a big school to, to administrate, then it does pose a, a, a challenge. But we are saying that if it is clearly articulated, who can administer CPD hours or activities, what the process entails, and everybody is clear on that, I believe we would yeah. be on going on on the right track. Because another misleading thing on this memo for this renewal, this memo says that everybody who had received their license before 2014, 2014 will automatically be given a new license. Yet when you look at the application form, there is a section there that says not approved. Mm -hmm. so, so who are you talking to? I, I don't to? understand what, what you're, 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 you're you have a outlining here. Form here by chance? No. So it's... If you are automatically approved. Yes, but yet the form has on it a section that says not approved. Mm. Oh, because someone will go through it and check yes. and decide. It will go through everything system. So yeah. that again. But are you okay with a, a, an automatic approval? I mean, I think people like accountability. No, we deserve accountability. All right. Um, um, so if, if it is that a teacher doesn't meet a requirement or is neglecting to do their hours or not performing. See, but okay. that but is our contention. It is not that the teacher mm -hmm. has neglected to do the hours. Mm -hmm. And the rule speaks mm -hmm. to a maintenance of your license. For you to maintain your license, you need this 120 hours of continuous professional development over the five year period. Mm -hmm. It is not happening. It has not happened. And we are saying, if you are telling me, submit your full license, because these licenses don't have an expiration date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have your license, bring it in, and we'll automatically give you a new one. Mm -hmm. But yet, when I fill out this form, you, I am saying when I submit that form, I'm allowing you to say I cannot, this can be disapproved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For what reason? Yeah. What would yeah. be reasons for the, disapproval? The only reason that can be used right now, because if you have a full license, and if ministry has been doing its job in carrying mm -hmm. out the proper vetting when the full license was issued initially, mm -hmm. then the only point that they should be looking at, the only area, would be the 120 hour CPDs. Yeah. Because an, a full license can only be acquired when you have the proper qualifications. Mm -hmm. So that should be in, the, in their P file already. So the only area that they would be focusing on would be the 120 CPD hours. Now we have a problem with the 2014 mm -hmm. because Fairly, you can only take something retroactively if you can prove that you have had all the mechanisms in place mm -hmm. to ensure that these were being provided yeah. and that there was proper accountability of the hours mm -hmm. and that the systems that were put in place were fairly done. Mm -hmm. But ministry cannot provide this. When teachers go to check their file, there's a teacher who has two license numbers, mm -hmm. some CPD hours here, some CPD hours there. The, the filing system yeah. mm -hmm. has been in, inadequate. Mm -hmm. We won't speculate why, 
the fact remains that it is not accurate. So if you have not been keeping a track of the hours yeah. properly, if you have not been providing the necessary workshops, if you have been frustrating the systems that have been trying to provide, then how can you now disenfranchise teachers who are going to fall under that 2015 going forward category? Because these teachers have been a victim per se of mm -hmm. this system that has been happening over the years. And now you're going to tell them that within one year, they will have to earn two years, which is still impossible. For high school what teachers, it would take the next 20 years for them to be mm -hmm. able to ac accumulate the 120 hours. Mm -hmm. So how can you come and say, we're good, it's fair, we're starting with 2014. How yeah. can you say that when you cannot prove that the mechanisms that had been created yeah. were ineffective? So you are creating a whole lot of issues. You said something earlier this morning, when we don't think things through and create these ad hoc mm -hmm. ideas, then we will run into problems. Yeah. So what we're saying, if you want to, to enforce this rule, fine. Then let's start brand new 2019, mm -hmm. first September. Everyone who holds a full license, we're going to start. Don't start 2014. 2019 first September the with button. the condition with condition with the condition that no you can now prove that within the next five years mm -hmm. where it is in black and white you will be able to show this is how all the teachers yeah. in Belize will mm -hmm. be able to yeah. gather their 120 hours Galen University will be providing, BNT will be providing, we'll partner with UB, we'll do this, we'll do that, and we'll have areas for geography, for physics, for chemistry, we'll have areas for English, social studies, HFLE. When we see that, and we can start at 2019 where no one, yeah. because like you said before, everyone, we need accountability, and we also need to be fair to our teachers. Mm -hmm everyone must be included. If one teacher is excluded, then it is not a fair playing game. We need to ensure that everyone is included. So come 2019, first September, let's start new. But prove to us that you have created a calendar for the next five years yeah. where teachers will be able to access. Mm -hmm. We have online. Are, are we moving with technology? Mm -hmm. Teachers should be able to access these things online and do CPD hours online. We should be allowing these processes to happen, but we're not partnering and coming up with ideas and so working the way. So it's not just doing a course and you get CPD hours. It has to be sanctioned it by the yes, ministry. Yes, be, uh, it accredited. must be sanctioned. It so be I, I hear that as your proposed solution moving forward. But let me, let me just ask one of the questions so that we understand what we're dealing with. Uh, your members are out on vacation and whatnot. I'm sure those who, who uh, got the memo and are concerned have contacted you. What, how many teachers are we looking at that are, being, that are in a situation where they do not have, or they've been told that they do not have the full 120 credit hours? I guess the fact that they um, were saying anybody be 2014, before 2014, they may have an idea, may have an idea, but we cannot sit here and tell you definitively the number, but we know that quite a number of our teachers are affected. Mm -hmm. And also, when you look at this memo, you have to question how genuine these people are. Because that memo says you must apply immediately. Mm -hmm. yeah. What does immediately mean? Mm -hmm. People are on vacation. Yeah. You say to teachers, you're on vacation during the month of July. And yet I'm going to send out a memo in the middle of July saying to you, you need to do this immediately. Before the new school year. It's, the, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strange timeline, I will admit that much. And, and why not tell it at the beginning of the school year so you know right. that by the next school year you have to be up to mark. Right. So from what you have seen in this memo, um, from any communication you've gathered, what are going to be the consequences? Has, has any teacher gone in and realized they don't have the 120 and they were denied? Yes. I think a lot of our teachers are in that dilemma right now. But so they're being told they won't get their renewal no, of their license? No, that, that part we cannot speak to. But 
what we have to look at is the, the other memo that came out with the continued eligibility mm -hmm. for employment. Now, remember, commission is the one who, the body that approves employment. And employment cannot be given to any teacher without a license. Mm -hmm. A teacher holding a full license is in a good place for continued employment. So we're talking about a teacher who probably has been in the system for some time, but remember that employment is, it, they have to apply for employment, especially let's say a case where a teacher has been moved to administrative level, mm -hmm. is now applying for vice principal, was moved to vice principal. Now, that management needs to apply for employment of that teacher. Mm -hmm. If this teacher does not apply re according to this renewal license, if this teacher applies, but the teacher has not gone in to renew, this teacher will not be able to, to be approved for that employment. Because they would technically wouldn't have wouldn't their have. full license. You wouldn't have. So, it's not only about maintaining your full license, but it is also having implications on your employment because a teacher with a full license gets a contract of up to five years, those with provisional, mm -hmm. a yearly contract. You know, so what will be the implications here for these teachers who will need to renew their contract right now but have not gone in? Are, are we hearing now that if you don't do that, you're not going to have a job coming September? You know, so... So what I'm hearing from you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that there is just an air of uncertainty. Teachers don't know if they'll get their license renewal. They don't know if they'll be approved for their professional because, teaching because job. Because it does require an approved or not approved. Because there's a, a, a memo mm -hmm. sent out with here's how many hours you gained when you think that you've covered your basis. You haven't. You, you haven't. Um, and so what is, I mean, we know one thing, your members are entirely dependent on, on, on the union to speak out on their behalf, and not just to the media, mm -hmm. but to reach out to the ministry, which is where the decision is made. Yeah. What's the next step? Well, we have asked um, to meet with Dr. Bob, mm -hmm. and um, I must say that she has welcomed the invitation. I spoke to her um, personally last week, and she has expressed that um, we will meet in August. Mm -hmm and we're going to be looking at this particular memo, mm -hmm. the renewal of license. So we're hoping that in that meeting, we're able to look at this from all angles and be able to come up with a proper solution and that they can understand why is it that we have made these points and why is it that we're saying we're not encouraging teachers to ever break the rules. Mm -hmm but rather we want to ensure that when these rules are enforced that they're done in a fair manner and that mechanisms are in place to ensure that the rule is carried out fairly. That's all we're saying. And what's the deadline for the uh, renewal of the license? Is there the, one outline in the memo? No, they no. didn't have any. Just, out immediately. just immediately. immediately. And we have an issue with that. Mm -hmm. We in fact have asked our members to put these applications on hold. We do know that some will, but we really want to sit with the ministry and ask them, try to get them to understand. You have to take a part of the blame. And you, we are not going to be encouraging the ministry to be using this so-called big stick to say, if you don't renew, if you don't apply, then come September, you don't have a job. Because that is then going to be mm -hmm. another form of retrenchment. Yes. That is what it's going to be. And we are not going to tolerate that. There are conditions for you to terminate employment. But if you have created or contributed to some of the difficulties that the holders of these licenses are having, then come on, let's get back on the table and discuss and determine a way forward. But we will not have our teachers become intimidated. And you know that BNTU, when it calls out its members on issues like these, they will come out in their numbers. And we are hoping that that situation can be avoided. We have written to Dr. Bob. Um, you said she didn't get the letter, the uh -huh. email, so that the will email. be sent today again mm -hmm. so that she can see what it is we are recommending. Just like what we did with the, with the time of the special permit, we made recommendations. We sat down and we agreed 
as to what is workable, mm -hmm. how everybody can come out in a win-win situation. That is what we would like for this. But teachers having been taught, in fact, from 2000, when these education rules or the handbook that articulated the licensing framework came out, persons have had their license from then. So you're talking almost 19 years, and then now in one swoop, you are going to say to these people, out with that if you don't apply. And that is our concern. Well, clearly we know the union will be on top of this, and uh, we do hope that there is a proper resolution made before the start of the school year, because, uh, of course, who we think about the most and the, the main collective interest is uh, the well-being of children once they're in that classroom mm -hmm. and that they're getting a proper education. Thank you for coming in and being a part of this conversation. Thank you, too. And we'll keep you updated. Yes. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking about the ban on gillnets. So stay tuned.